Hello, my name is George Aguilar. I'm the training manager here at Clayval headquarters in Costa Mesa. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing what to look for when troubleshooting our 90 series pressure reducing valves. Let's get started. So in this video here, we're gonna, we're gonna go over some troubleshooting tips and a couple of items to look for when troubleshooting. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna visit our website or contact your local clay valve rep and make sure that you get yourself one of these IOMs. Again, these are available on our website as well, but the great thing about these IOMs is it gives you operation and startup procedures. You have maintenance tips, and you also have a chart right here of some of the things that you may wanna go through when troubleshooting. You have a symptom, a probable cause, and a remedy. So it gives you a couple items to look through. On the back side of this IOM, you get an exploded view of the main valve, a schematic of the 9001, the common components that you'll find in a pressure reducing valve or a 90 series, and most importantly, you'll have your CRD uh, cutaway here that has your spring chart. So it's important information that you know, or it's important that you have this information for your CRD, so that way you know your adjustment ranges depending on what spring you have. So on the chart on the far right here, you have PSI change per turn. And again, that PSI per turn is based on which color spring you have inside of your CRD. So in this one here, I have a green spring. This is gonna be a 30 to 300. That's the same one that we have installed on our valve. So going through some of the symptoms or the probable causes that you may have with your 9001, we're just gonna go down the list here with our, with our IOM. If your valve has failed to open, all right, meaning that you're not getting any water downstream, uh, your downstream system pressure is getting really low, some of the things that you wanna look for, uh, number one, you wanna make sure you have sufficient pressure on your inlet, all right? Hopefully you have gauges on your valve or gauges within your vault so you can verify what those pressures are. Um, first and foremost, you wanna check that. You wanna go through your main valve checks. Make sure that your hydral is working properly. Um, if your valve hasn't been serviced for a while, if you have really aggressive water, if you had a main break, any of those things can allow the main valve not to work. The main valve may be stuck, it may not be able to open, um, and so on. Uh, for those videos on troubleshooting your main valve, please visit our website. Now, as far as the CRD, um, verifying that the CRD is working, if you're not getting any pressure down below uh, into your system, the first thing that you would wanna do is vary the adjustment on your CRD. Maybe someone made changes to the CRD and it could be set too low. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do, again, we'll verify we have some pressure. We'll get some pressure going here in our valve. You see an inlet pressure starting to rise here. So currently our system pressure is running at 60. Our CRD, or what, our, what we believe our CRD is currently set at as 40. So again, the first thing you wanna do is vary the adjustment on the CRD. So we're gonna remove the black cap. The CRD, to make changes on your CRD, it's always important to know, again, that you have that spring range. It's also important to know that clockwise always increases. On any of our pilots, clockwise is always gonna increase. Counterclockwise, obviously, will do the opposite and decrease. Um, it's important to know what you are changing. So in this case, when we decrease our pressure, or when we go counterclockwise, we should be decreasing. So let's try that out. And you see our downstream pressure has dropped. We're just above 30 there. Let's bring that back up and verify that the CRD is working. It seems our CRD is working just fine. Um, the other, the other uh, option or the other item to look for if your valve is not opening, if you've already done those other three checks we've just discussed, these speed controls that you find on here these speed controls, they could be buried. Right now, this speed control looks like it's all the way out. Let's show you guys what it looks like when it's all the way in. 
If you open up your speed control and you see this, there is, it's, that, that speed control is buried. That needle that's inside there is absolutely buried. You wanna make sure that when you're troubleshooting or when you're going through startup or anything that these speed controls are backed out completely. We'll back that out. And we'll put that cover back on. And that's, those are basically the deals that you're gonna, those are basically the items you're gonna look for when trying to deal with figuring out why your valve is not opening. Now, just the opposite of that, some of the items to look for when your valve is not closing, okay? When your valve is not closing, you wanna verify, number one, that you're getting water pressure onto the cover of the valve. All right, you have a couple of restrictions here. If we follow the inlet, if we follow our tubing here from our supply pressure, if we follow this supply pressure, the, one of the first things that we come across is our strainers. Again, you're gonna have either the Y strainer or you'll have the inline strainer. So to verify that we have pressure right now, with the Y strainer, it's great. We have a little blow off on here. So all we have to do is just open up this blow off And we can see that our strainer is pretty clear there. All right, if I didn't have this blow off or if I didn't have this Y strainer, one of the options would be to close our cover, close our cover connection, close our outlet and close our inlet. And now we can open up our number one, our inlet ball valve, and you can see we got water pressure coming off there. Verifying that our inline strainer is good. We also have, right after the strainer, if you verify that the strainer is good, we'll open up all our ball valves here. You verify that the strainers are good. The next point of restriction is gonna be our restriction fitting. Now this restriction fitting, all right, this restriction fitting looks like this right here. You can see that restriction fitting, sitting, uh, restriction right inside there. Our copper ones or our brass ones here on our uh, copper and brass fittings, this is all stainless. We do have optional inserts depending on how aggressive your water is. But what can happen if you have really aggressive water, maybe some higher pressures, if you're using our standard Delrin insert, you wanna make sure that you verify that that insert is, is actually inside there. If that insert is clogged, all right, for whatever reason, if that insert is clogged, you're not gonna get any water onto the cover, the valve won't close. And just the opposite, if this, restriction fitting is blown out then you would be putting too much water on the cover and you'd be flooding it that would allow the valve to not open all right um, for operations on, uh, on the restriction fitting you'll have to see our operational video but again you have to have that restriction fitting in there you want to verify that that restriction fitting is good and clean also when troubleshooting your valves um, if you want to check your cover connections. Make sure there's no buildup on your cover connections. If there's no water coming off the cover, or if there's no, if this cover connection's clogged, you're not going to be able to get water on or get water off the cover. That can, that can hinder the valve operation as well. Now, to verify that just the hydro works, you see that we have our ball valves. We have one on the inlet. I call this our number one. We have one on the cover. I call this our number two. And then we have a number three ball valve, which is on the outlet. The great thing about these ball valves is you can manually operate the valve to do whatever you, what you want it to do. Um, in this case right here, before you start closing any of these ball valves, you want to make sure that you check the effect in the system. All right, before you do this, because this valve may shut, this valve may open. Um, you want to make sure that you check the effect in the system but there's a simple shutdown sequence that you can do using these ball valves. 
So what I'll do is I'll shut number three. By closing number three, we follow our inlet. Water pressure has nowhere to go because this is closed. Water pressure backs up onto the cover, the valve closes. At that point, we can close number two, which locks the water pressure in the cover, keeping the valve closed or keeping the valve at its current position. And then we close number one, which eliminates our water supply. By having these ball valves, if we did find that our, our uh, strainer was clogged, or if our restrictor fitting was blown out or clogged, if the CRD wasn't tracking like it was for us earlier, by, I, by isolating this pilot system, now I would be able to disconnect We can disconnect our tubing here and you can see we have no water pressure. I can make any changes I need to the pilot system and, and we're good to go. We would be able to make any changes, you know, let's say if our CRD yoke or our disc is bad, uh, maybe we had that main break, um, our strainers are clogged, we would be able to make those changes so our, our shutdown sequence was three, two, one. Our startup sequence, we're gonna open up number one. You see our 60 PSI come in. We open up number two. You wanna make sure you always bleed the air out. So you're gonna loosen up some of these fittings at your high points. If you have a position indicator or an X101, we have a bleeder on the top there. We'll loosen that up. Get some of that air off the cover. And then lastly, number three, we'll open up number three. Number three is always going to be slowly. And we're back running that 40. Um, it's important to remember as well, when you have gauges on your valve like this, all right, this gauge is connected just before this ball valve here. So when we do close it, you'll see this trap pressure. This trap pressure is just within the, the pilot system here. You can see our gauge. This is our actual system gauge. That's down to zero. So this valve is closed. We're just having a little bit of trap pressure here. So that will be it for our troubleshooting. That concludes the video today. Thanks for stopping by and watching. For further videos or any other questions, please visit our website. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.